Hello and welcome everyone. If you're new over here, please hit that subscribe button because today we are going to be discussing a huge problem that is plaguing some of the more promising AI inferencing frameworks out there that you may or may not have heard about. So from past couple of months, I've been uh, looking into some of these upcoming next gen frameworks like IK underscore Llama and K transformers and they offer tremendous advantages over our regular Llama.cpp and also over Olama. These are forks of Llama.cpp but they do offer genuine and tremendous gains in both performance and also in the prompt processing speed. So think about multi-concurrency, 30% memory improvements, improved KV cache, prompt processing, like the advantages that these frameworks offer are huge. And the reason why I started looking into them was because they offer rock solid performance even on the massive models like DeepSeek R1671 billion or the newer Quen 3 235 billion parameter model. So now, even though these frameworks blow Olama and Llama.cpp out of the water in terms of raw performance, but these are missing one critical feature that every developer needs. And we cannot live without that anymore. So that feature is function calling and an added on feature along with function calling is structured responses, right? So having native JSON responses coming out of it. Open AI's Python client provides native support for both function calling and structured responses. These frameworks pretend that they do support OpenAI's v1 chat completions endpoint. However, they lack the structured responses and tool calling both the functionalities over here. So now this isn't just about getting text from an API. If you are building real world applications, whether it's an AI agent, a financial analysis tool, or something like a medical diagnostic interface, you need predictable JSON responses. You need multi-step function calls and a state aware workflow. And right now these framework just won't cut it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can build a fast agent API, which is our open source solution that turns these broken frameworks into full fledged production ready tools. And here's what we'll be covering today. We'll see why frameworks like K transformers almost work. How Langraph solves the state management problem over here. A live demo of turning unstructured responses into open AI compliant function calls and also converting these unstructured responses into a more structured JSON response and then deploying the solution as a Docker container without any coding required over here with just configuration. All right, let's see the problem that we are trying to solve over here. We have one server that is open AI compatible and the other two servers that claim to be fully open AI compatible and they are not. So what does that mean? Let's take a look at that. So the very first server, which is our Olama server over here, exposed at 11434. And this is my uh, endpoint over here for my local server. This is the local machine that I'm working on right now. And if at this endpoint, I initiate uh, a function call, uh, and that function call is done using the regular OpenAI's Python library. This is the official Python um, library that OpenAI provides to us. What we are attempting to do is adding a couple of functions. So one function is get current weather and another one is a simple calculator function over here. And these two functions we will be associating to our open AI tool call over here. So in the request for the chat completions endpoint, we will not only specify our base URL over here, but we'll also pass in tools. And this is the critical aspect over here where we want to just pass in all the tools that we have created. And then we want the open AI's response back to let us know whether the tool call is required for this particular request or not. So let's do that. Um, we'll send this particular request to our Olama endpoint over here and let's see what happens. So, and this is hitting our Olama 
endpoint right now and let's see so this is simulating the tool call and it does correctly does these two tool calls over here right so um what we had asked is what is the weather in london uk and what is 85 times 13 so it acknowledged the use of location and unit over here and it said expression is 85 times 13 for the calculator app so which is which is okay which is good now let's see if the other frameworks like I can underscore llama, which is exposed at port 8001, will do the same thing or not. So what I'm going to do is I will make this window a little smaller over here. And I will bring up the IK llama. So IK llama framework is running right here on port 8001. And let's now send the same function call to IK llama. And of course, it says that unsupported parameter tools. So even though it exposes chat completions endpoint, it is very clearly saying that tools parameter is just not supported and I'm not going to work over here. Let's go to K transformers, which is exposed on port 10002. And let's see if K transformers would do the same thing for us. It will it honor the function call or not. So I'm going to send the same request to our K transformers and it attempts to do the function call. It doesn't say that the tools is not supported. However, it is not really doing the function call over here, right? It is just talking in terms of regular chat conditions. It actually completely ignored existence of function in our open AI. And there were no tool calls or content found in the response because it was a text response for us. So how do we solve this problem? I'm going to show you the implementation already, how I have solved it. And then I will go into details on what the implementation looks like. So I'm going to send now the first function wrapper call to I can llama through my wrapper over here. So my wrapper is exposed at port 8002. And this wrapper in turn calls I can llama on port 8001 over here. So I'm going to send my function call to 8002. And you will see some request response happening over here on the Ikelama, which is the bottom framework over here. So I'm going to send the request now and it has acknowledged the request. It did not complain about the unsupported parameters this time around. And it is it is a thinking model. It is Cohen 3 in the back end. It's a thinking model and it does take some amount of time. The thinking model also contains think tags. So this framework will smartly acknowledge all that and it will strip out everything that's not needed. And that is pretty awesome. You can see that this time around we got our get current weather and calculator both of them correctly back right so this is the quen 3 model and that responded back even with the thinking enabled it responded back accurately with the two successful tool calls let's take a look at using this wrapper and sending this to our k transformers on the top so let's do that so we are now sending the wrapped call to k transformers and let's see what k-transformers does it is responding back in the function call now so exact same thing and it responded back in these two function calls which is pretty awesome let's go and see our implementation if we come back and take a look at how this chat completions endpoint works for the most common use case which is our open web ui so if we send a high, so Llama 3.2 is the one that we are having for our um, old Llama over here. So if we send a simple high, it will say, yes, hi, how can I assist you? So chat completions, regular chat endpoint works, right? So if you're going to send a simple chat to the chat completions endpoint to Olama, of course, it's going to work. If you send this simple chat to K transformers or IK Llama, that will work too. Let's take a look at that. So. Now we're going to switch the model to this is our K transformers DeepSeq V3 Q4KM and let's send the same high over here back to our DeepSeq model and DeepSeq also says hi back over here right so you can see DeepSeq responded back with a high 
And now if we switch this model back to our Quen 3, 235 billion parameter model, and if we send a high back over here to Quen 3, then it will start its thinking process the way it is supposed to respond back in a thinking way. All right, let me now show you how you can run this application. And after that, I will show you how this whole application is being built using LangGraph and Fast API. So currently my application is already running. So I'm going to show you a Docker PS. So you will see that there are two instances of this Fast Agent API that are running over here. Um, and what I have to do is to stop these two instances. So I will do a docker stop fast agent API instance one and fast agent API instance two. And then I can do a docker ps minus a and you will see that they are both instances are gone now. And I'll show you from scratch how you would build and run this application in your local. This is the repo for our fast agent API. You will be able to clone this repo, git clone and copy paste that URL. Now we can CD into fast agent API. And all these instructions are right here. So let's let's go over here in the instructions and one by one we can follow this. So we CD into fast agent API. So we are CD into fast agent API. We can create our Python environment and activate the Python environment. However, let's go to the Docker usage first because that's the fastest way to do this. So while you are inside the fast agent API, you can initiate the Docker build and it will start the Docker build for you. And the Docker build process is the most tried and secure process that you can use all the time. So once you have your Docker image built, what you have to actually do is you have to find find your one implementation for which you want to keep this API as the wrapper. So let me show you what I'm talking about and then it will make sense. So currently your chat completions open AI compatible endpoint talks to whichever your backend is. So if your backend is Olama, it talks to that. If your backend is K-Transformers, it talks to that. If your backend is IK Llama, it talks to that, right? We are changing this. We are switching it out to our wrapper. What this wrapper is essentially doing is it is sitting in between your actual implementation and it is communicating with an implementation in the backend, right? So when you are sending the call, you are no longer sending the call directly to K-Transformers. You are actually sending the call to the wrapper and the wrapper is sending the call to the K-Transformers. Why is this important? When the wrapper intercepts your call, it adds certain details to the call that it sends forward to K-Transformers such that K-Transformers understands that this is a tool call or this is a structured response call. Let me show you what all different details you will need in order to configure your fast agent API wrapper. So the very first detail that you of course need is where is your K-Transformer server? In our case, it is on the same local machine where the fast agent API is, which is 192.168.1.11 and on the port 10002 slash v1. So that is the chat completions API that partially K-Transformers exposes. We're gonna use our fast agent API to configure with this particular endpoint. So let's write it down over here. So this is our endpoint for K-Transformers and the endpoint for our fast agent API would be, um, let's say 8003, right? So this is what we will choose for our wrapper API. So in this particular document, you will see, you have to create a log file in your local now. So just go ahead and paste um, paste these two commands over here and this will create two folders in your local for instance one and instance two right and uh, what we'll do is so let me let me actually showcase to you uh, both the instances over here so it will make sense so let me make this red and this instance will be 8002 let's say Whenever you have your open AI pointed to 8002 slash v1, it is going to communicate with iKalama. Whenever you have your API, open AI, API configured at 8003, it is going to point to 
your K transformer set 1002. So how do you configure this? If we go back to our instructions, in our case, instance one, let's say is Ikelama and instance two is K transformers. Blue is K transformers and red is uh, our Ikelama over here. Okay, so now copy these Docker commands. So in these Docker commands, you will see that instance one over here is being configured for backend API URL of 8001, right? So we have instance one, it is configured for backend API URL of 8001 and we'll go ahead, copy and paste and run this command for our instance one. And what this has done is it has now created your fast agent API host logs instance one. So there is this particular log file that is now created. And you can see that your application has started over here and you can see the log file over here. So if you now send a command to the instance one, which is exposed at port 8002. Right, so let's let's go ahead and let's go to port 8002 and let's run our function call example over here. All the requests and responses are being logged for us over here. So we can very clearly see that there is interaction going in between. It is catching this particular request, enhancing the request, sending it to the backend API, the backend API is now processing the request and this being a thinking model, it does take a little bit of time uh, to respond back, but we also strip out the thinking tags from this and there we go. So these were the two function calls that were returned back from the model. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for K transformers. We want to spin up another instance, right? So let's, let's do that. So to spin up another instance, it is as simple as running another instance of this particular Docker image. So in the first instance, we were mapping the in internal port 8000 to the host port 8002 and the backend API URL was 8001. In the second instance, we will take the internal port 8000, map it to port 8003 and the backend API URL for us is going to be 10002 slash v1. Okay, so let me run this command over here. And now we will have our second instance running with the backend of K transformers, right? So now this instance is running and we have to configure our open AI URL with 8003. Let's configure our URL with 8003 slash v1, which is our open AI fully compatible endpoint. And let's uh, send this request to 80003 endpoint and I'm pretty sure Ktransformer received this request now and it is attempting to process this. Okay, yep, it is responding back and this is all the log that we have for it, last 1000 lines of it. And you can see that this also responded back in the same way we have function call done for the attributes that we were looking for. Okay, this is pretty cool. I have enhanced this application to also support Pydentic structured responses. In the interest of this video not getting too long, the details of how this implementation was done, I'll cover in the next video. And that will also serve as a tutorial for LangGraph2 for us. All right. Thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you would like to watch and see the actual implementation or if you are interested in the LangGraph based flow, then please uh, like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.